This is KGW News at Noon. We start this noon with some breaking traffic news. Right now, a big bottleneck on I-84 due to a crash westbound near Lloyd Center. Hello, I'm Christine Pitawanich. Thank you for joining us. Here you can see a static shot from ODOT and the there in dark red. That means nothing is moving. Right now, it sounds like all westbound lanes will be closed for at least two hours. No word on any injuries, but a KGW staff member drove by moments ago and said they saw three cars smashed up. Right now, definitely consider avoiding the area if you can altogether. Eastbound lanes are also backing up because first responders are crossing the median to help. We'll have the latest information online at KGW.com and on our four o'clock newscast. Another big story we're following continued fallout from the crazy weather we've had right now crews are working hard to get the power back on for thousands of people across Oregon and southwest Washington after wind brought down trees and power lines yesterday and crews today are busy cleaning up the mess from trees that crashed onto roads and also into homes a spokesperson for PGE said the company's main priority remains be safe it continues to be safety for both customers and crews in the field. So our crews have to go into the areas. They have to get to wherever the that damage is and be able to assess it. But if, condition, if conditions are such that it's not safe for them to get there, that can cause delays in the assessment and the restoration and repair. Portland got the title of having the most power outages nationwide yesterday. At its peak, more than 200,000 customers in Oregon and southwest Washington were without power. By the way, here are a few tips from utility companies on how to stay safe when there are downed power lines. Always assume a power line is live. Of course, don't touch it, not even with any kind of object. Also, don't drive over a fallen power line. And if a line falls on top of your car, stay inside until crews address it and say it's safe. Now to try to restore power quicker, PGE officials announced today they're bringing in more crews from neighboring states to help in Oregon. Yesterday, they had over 600 people on the ground working. Now things have improved throughout the morning, but thousands, as we have said, of people in Oregon and Southwest Washington still without power. Here's where we stand. And right now, Portland General Electric is reporting about 1,500 outages or so, with almost 31,000 customers affected. And also Pacific Power reporting 398 outages in Oregon, with over 6,500 customers affected there. Meantime, up in Clark County, Clark Public Utilities reporting 664 people within southwest Washington affected by outages. And a quick reminder, if you see something happen where you you are you can always share photos or video from your neighborhood they can be sent to the number right there on your screen 503-226-5088 but please make sure you don't put yourself in harm's way to do it okay now to rod in the weather center rod today looking a whole lot different than yesterday or the last week or so yes finally nice and quiet feel for those people that are going on what some of the, what, some of the i'm assuming 24 hours without power now and uh, i mean it's not what i would call cold cold outside but if you don't have heat Probably pretty chilly. Uh, yesterday, by the way, real quick, 48, mi uh, 48 mile per hour wind gusts out at the airport. That was in that two o'clock hour yesterday afternoon. It was kind of the last burst of winds. And then, although we mainly only had high water spots on roadways and not so much river flooding, we did have two day rainfall totals hit 3.28 inches. The highest wind gust I saw off the coast was this one, 86 in Lincoln County near Yahats. Salem popped 55, McMillan popped the 52 mile per hour wind gusts. Both of those were yesterday afternoon. Today, mostly a southwest light to 15 mile per hour wind. Everything's coming in off the Pacific. This is a scattered shower pattern, a very normal, very typical pattern so far. And so far, I have not really seen anything that looked heavy on radars, but mostly some widely scattered light showers. Clouds are with us. Temperature, not bad. 48 degrees. We'll be in the upper 40s, I think, throughout the rest of the day. Scattered shower chance continues into this evening, although I don't really look for a lot of rain. About 46 at 8 p.m. Forecast includes your New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. That's coming up. Okay, thank you. Westland police are investigating after someone spray painted a racial slur on the front of a house Christmas Day. As KGW's Evan Watson reports, neighbors there say this is just the latest sign that the person responsible needs help. 
Here's what we're talking about. We blurred it, but it faces busy Sunset Avenue. Captain Otis Rollins of the Westland Police Department tells me this case is an open investigation and it certainly has, quote, all the hallmarks of a bias incident. Police can't definitively say yet who wrote the slur or why it was painted. A busy set avenue in West Lynn with an unwelcome surprise that arrived on Chris morning. The community and other neighbors have to take the brunt of this. This shouldn't be on us. A racial slur painted on the front of the house facing the street. Neighbors tell KGW they live the homeowner painted it herself and it's directed at the black family next door. Andre Hanel was one of those people living next door who's looking for some kind of solution. It wasn't just the slur, it was also that she called my son the slur. So my son was out there, I guess he was one of the ones that called the police because she was out screaming, he called the police and to her face, or to his face, she, he was like, she was basically said, you know, F you inward. And the police were right there. It's like, you know, something needs to be done. Somebody needs to, this person, they, they need help. I'm not sure what's going on, but it sounds like to me somebody's going out for help and somebody needs to deal with it. In the days following, it was actually the Westland Police Department who painted over the slur with the yellow paint, although it's still somewhat legible. Westland Police Captain Otis Rollins says the department will return to paint over the slur more thoroughly once it stops raining, provided the homeowner keeps giving them permission. Channel says he and other neighbors have called the police multiple times over the past year to check on the woman who lives at the house with the slur painted on it. He said he heard her screaming and seen her break the windows of her home. And this isn't the Westland community. The Westland community is very supportive. You know, I coach sports there. I have some really, really, you know, good, made some really good friends. But I just feel as though there's a disconnect there um, between law enforcement and what needs to be done and things aren't being done. Captain Rollins says the Oregon Department of Justice has our resources and support for their investigation. He said if investigators find that a person spray paint racial slur on their own property, that could be for the district attorney to prosecute. He said Oregon's bias crime statute is more clear as disruptions or damages to another person's property. But first, police need to finish their investigation and announce any findings. I'm not sure what they can do about it. I just feel like something needs to be done. While myself and a photographer visited the neighborhood today, a few people walked out of a house that has the word painted on it. A man told me he knows the woman who lives there and he went and asked her if she'd talk to me, but she quickly drove away. Evan Watson, reporting for KGW News. Also in West Lynn, nine people are trying to figure out what happens next today after they were forced from their homes as a fire tore through apartment units late yesterday afternoon. Crews responded to the fire in a four story building on Fifth Avenue at around 430. Firefighters say people were hurt. One of them was taken to the hospital with non life threatening injuries. Fire officials say a candle in one of the apartments started the fire. As we know, this weather is really challenging and folks uh, have to turn to alternative heating sources and alternative light sources. I just want people to be really thoughtful when they avoid anything with open flames, especially during power outages. This, and that's why we go back to anything battery operated if you need a light source. The Red Cross is now helping the people who were affected find new housing. Now, village Football bowl season is officially continuing with the Oregon Ducks in the spotlight later tonight. They'll face North Carolina in the Holiday Bowl at Petco Park in San Diego. This is the first Holiday Bowl since 2019 due to pandemic related conditions. The game will also be the first football game played at Petco Park, which is home to Major League Baseball's San Diego Padres. Tonight will be Oregon's first time ever facing North Carolina and both teams are looking for their 10th win of the season. The executive director of the UVO Alumni Association says a lot of events lead up to the game itself, but making things more difficult this time around, many people have had trouble getting to San Diego because of the weather. We had canceled flights. We spent the better part of the day in an airport. And in the case of me and my family, we ultimately decided to rent a car in Eugene and we drove nearly a thousand miles from Eugene down to San Diego. We're really glad to be here. That is dedication. Despite the travel issues, though, the pregame tailgate happening later this afternoon all be sold out. And the Holiday Bowl kicks off, by the way, tonight at five o'clock. Go Ducks!